I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on Matrix, where we talk about scalar multiplication and linear combination in this video. Now, here's the thing. Whatever I'm doing on Matrix is with one objective, and that is how to apply this knowledge when we work on transformations, solving linear systems of equations, and finally vectors. I have many examples on vectors which, where we have used matrix, but here is a methodical approach. And if you really want to begin with learning concepts about matrix and its application, this will be an excellent place for you. So share these videos with your friends and I hope they are worthwhile. Now let's begin with the, with the concept. So we're saying if A is any matrix and C is any scalar, then the product C times A is the matrix obtained by multiplying each entry of A by C. We'll take up an example to really explain all this. So the example here is for the matrix A, B and C, find 2A, I, B and K, C, where I squared is minus one. So that's a complex number, right? Now let's give some background to it. So we are saying A is any matrix which uh, in previous videos, we have explained could be written as a set of these elements. It is rows and columns, right? We're talking about, and each element could be written as ij. Now, if I say scalar multiple, I'm saying c times a, right? So we are just multiplying each and every element of this matrix with c. That's it. Simple as that, correct? So I hope that is absolutely clear. So it is not going to change the dimensions. They are going to remain exactly same. And what you really do is inside elements get multiplied by some quantity. Now let's also note one thing, as you can see from the example, we do say scalar multiple, right? So that's a common term. Now this C basically could be wide variety of things, right? So this, I shouldn't say C belongs to real numbers. Well, C could be anything. C could be also not real, right? So also other things. For example, we'll take up trigonometric expressions. Ratios, right? So, so basically we could work even in the domain of imaginary numbers and all other domains, right? So we can use here a function also, right? So, so for us, C belongs to, I mean, C belongs to a function, okay. Right, so for us, C is very versatile. We are going to see how we could use this, right? But the idea of scalar multiplication is that treat it like a constant, perfect then it works out fine. Okay, let's continue. So we'll just solve this example, write down the solutions for each one of them and then move on and take the next example, which will be based on the concept of linear combination. First one, we want to find what is two times A is, right? The matrix A is given to us, we'll just multiply each and every element of this by two. That is what it is. So that would be 2 times 2, 4, minus 2, 2, and minus 4, correct? So you see dimensions of this matrix are still 2 by 2, nothing changes, right? The elements, they are scaled up, and therefore we are saying scalar. Scalar doesn't mean that this number is a number, right? Scalar means it's like a, a transformation, you can say, right? Dilation enlargement like that kind of right okay so that is how you should take so it is uh, more on the transformation terms okay the next is i times b right so i times b uh, i is a imaginary number which is equal to i squared is equals to minus one okay so this is uh, one i minus i and minus one so when you multiply with i, what you get here is i, here you get i square, minus i square, and minus i. This is what you get. Now you could simplify this. Since i square is minus 1, right, so I could write this as i, and that becomes 
minus 1. This is minus of minus 1 plus 1 and that remains as minus i. Do you see that? So that is what happens, correct? So clearly, uh, c is not a constant, okay? c could be anything, perfect? But scalar means like, uh, like stretching, right? Multiplying each element. So think about transformation in this regard. Okay, c. Okay, next one is general. So any constant k times c, that is what we are saying. So we'll just multiply each and every element. This time we have two by three matrix, right? So two rows, three columns. So what we get here is 2k, k minus k minus 3k, 0 and k, correct? So that is the step. Now this will also tell you that we could have gone the other way. So sometimes you may have a matrix like this and you can actually simplify this and factor out k and get something simpler. You're getting my point. So that is the kind of application which we might just use a couple of videos from here. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so let's continue and see what does it mean by linear combination. So let's look into linear combination. So if we have many matrices, so we have taken n matrices here, they should be of the same size, that is important. And each one of them is multiplied by some scalar, c1, c2, c3, c, n. Then we get an expression, which is like combination of these. Do you see that? c1, a1, c2, a2, like this, combination, right? So this is called the linear combination, where, of course, a's are your matrices and c's are your coefficients, correct? So at times, we'll just say coefficients of this matrix. So those multiples, scalar multiples, are the coefficients. Is that clear? Okay. Let's take up an example. For the matrix A and B, see both are of the same size, so we have two by three matrices, correct? Both of them. Now we can talk about linear combination. Example here is to find three times A minus two times B, right? So, so that's what it is. So we'll do first scalar multiplication and then we'll do the combination. So first step will be, uh, let me see, okay. Let's squeeze it in here. Okay. So we are saying three times a. So three times we'll do all this. One zero two zero two minus one. Correct. And minus two times we'll do all that, which is two one minus one minus three zero one. So that gives you. Let's first do the scalar multiplication, which we just learned. So it is a practice as we move forward. You can always pause the video, answer, and then check with my calculations. Sometimes my calculations can be wrong, but I hope you understand the method, right? So that's what we get. So don't bother about negative. We already placed it here. Just multiply by 2. So double them up, right? So we have 1, 2, minus 2, minus 6, 0, and 2, right? Now we are supposed to subtract each corresponding elements right so i hope you remember that part initial videos we talked about addition and subtraction so we basically do what we do three minus four right so we do three minus four we get minus one zero minus two gives us minus two six minus minus two gives us eight right okay zero minus six gives us six six minus zero gives us six and minus 3 minus 2 gives us minus 5. Okay? So that becomes your answer. Is that clear? So that is how you will do linear combination. So very important exercise. Uh, I hope it's absolutely clear. Now let's take more examples based on this linear combination. So as I was saying, we could work with uh, trigonometric ratios. So here we have sines and cosines and um, we'll see the combination, linear combination, right? So linear doesn't really mean here that you get a linear equation. Okay, so, so let's see what do we get. So basically, in the first part, sine x is being multiplied to each and every element of the matrix. So we get sine square x, and here we get minus sine x cos x. Here we get sine x cos x 
and here we get sine square x okay and to this we are adding another 2 by 2 matrix which is cos square x here we get cos x sine x we get minus sine x cos x and we get cos square x okay now let's combine them so we get sine square x plus cos square x and then we get minus sine x cos x we get plus cos x sine x okay here we get sine x cos x minus sine x cos x okay this one gives us sine square x plus cos square x okay now what well we know sine square x plus cos square x is 1 correct so we can write 1 here here we have sine x cos x minus I mean that becomes 0 right okay this one is again 0 and here we get 1 do you see that so we get identity matrix right so we get a matrix with diagonals once other things are zeros so that is what we get so I hope you understand this and that is a very important result which we might use later okay so I think that's the last example I hope that helps you to understand how we do scalar multiplication what is linear combination and you have a flavor of how it could be utilized later so we can apply this to polar systems to trigonometry transformations hope that makes sense feel free to share my videos with your friends if you like and subscribe to them that'd be great thanks for watching and all the best